Okay, folks, I will leave a link where you can find all this so you can see all my sources. Denver City Council member Candy C. DeBaca, I've never actually uh, heard anybody pronounce their name, so I don't know how you pronounce the troglodyte's name, but Candy C. DeBaca retweeted and concurred with someone who said if they contract the coronavirus, a.k.a. COVID-19, they were going to every Trump rally they can, spreading the disease on purpose? Is that what the homosexual community is doing? I only ask because there are all these forums where people can go in and get tested for HIV, and a lot of them find out they did not know they had it. Homosexuals are 2 to 4% of the population, yet they are, roughly, 50% of all new HIV infections in any given year. So maybe she's using that as her template. The mentally ill woman attempted to retreat from this, saying she was being autistic. I mean, excuse me, I mean sarcastic and was illustrating the Donald Trump administration's downplaying of COVID-19 as a hoax. Trump didn't refer to COVID-19 as a hoax. Excuse me, I gotta move this. She's regurgitating a bogus edited commercial by Joe Biden et al. and just general mainstream idiocy that folks believe sans checking. In addition, will she call out Anthony Fauci for saying this? Quote, on the basis of a case definition requiring a diagnosis of pneumonia, the currently reported case fatality rate is approximately 2%. In another article in the journal, Guan et al. report mortality of 1.4% among 1,099 patients with laboratory-confirmed COVID-19. These patients had a wide spectrum of disease, disease severity. If one assumes that the number of asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic cases is several times as high as the number of reported cases, the case fatality rate may be considerably less than 1%. This suggests, he said this on February 28th, this suggests that the overall clinical consequences of COVID-19 may be ultimately more akin to those of a severe seasonal influenza, which has a case fatality rate of approximately 0.1%, or a pandemic influenza, similar to those in 57 1957 and 1968, rather than a disease similar to SARS or MERS, which have had case fatality rates of 9 to 10% and 36% respectively. And I added this, that's the end of the quote. Note, read the entire article. There are a lot of ifs in there. Larry Elder also played a montage featuring clowns like the overweight Bill de Blasio and the prune-faced Nancy Pelosi downplaying, downplaying... Vox, are you listening? Downplaying COVID-19 in late February, early March. Go about your lives. Don't change the way you're doing things. Go downtown. Hilarious. This is one of the reasons I'm always skeptical of what polls say. They're like a lot of these retarded Hollywood celebrities who think notoriety equals intelligence. They run their mouths on literally everything because there are millions of gullible rubes who hang on every word they say and treat them like some sort of deity because their lives are empty. I'm wondering if Mayor de Blasio waits for Obama to come to his home in the morning and dress him. You want a skirt today again today, Bill? If you say so, but it's going to make you look fatter than you already are, muttered the mulatto Manchurian to the chubby Empire State Mayor. Andro, Andrew Cuomo, or as Jesse Jackson would say, Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo, Governor Cuomo, said on March 1st that, quote, General risk remains low in New York, unquote. And I'm not blaming him for it. But if one of the antique media's enemies had said that, they would be having autistic fits for days. The Empire State was already a petri dish for contamination as influenza was running wild there. Note, we have had massive influenza epidemics before, but didn't shut down half the dang country. And I've got several links where you can check out influenza mortality and statistics from the CDC. But this is a case every winter, especially in the Midwest and Northeast. But this is a case, and I know this living in Iowa every winter, but this is a case every winter as people are sneezing, wheezing, coughing, rubbing their faces and noses, touching doorknobs and spreading it to unsuspecting victims. New York City may want to change its name to COVID-19 when this is all over. I thank Jesus Christ every morning that I do not live there. I wonder if that fat guy, face bloat Stan Cedar, I mean Sam Cedar is enjoying that small apartment all by himself. 
which is pretty much his routine anyways. Except he's eating a lot of pizza and pancakes because that's all they can slide under the door to the little troglodyte. <laughs> As of March 30th, New York State had almost 60,000 cases of COVID-19. It's approaching 80,000 now as I do this. It will be, it may be 100,000 by Sunday night. I'm wondering if some of those state officials also want Donald Trump to show up and dress them, maybe wipe their tushies for them, tuck them in bed, and read them a story too. You do know we have states for a reason, right? I don't think Fauci ha is as much a tool and political hack as some might think, but he was one of the forces behind the government fight against the HIV AIDS epidemic, which didn't accomplish much. We spent a lot on fighting HIV and AIDS, whereas if people would just quit, I'll get into that. Multiple sex partners, no condoms. I also get annoyed when government hacks flap their gums about Ryan White when everyone knows the massive spread of most STDs, and especially HIV AIDS in the US, was because of homosexual, acti homosexual activity not blood transfusions or in utero transmission. Yeah, that does happen, but it's not the majority of the cases. Drug, ad drug addicts also contributed. Remember the junkie flu in New York City back in the late 70s? What is it with New York City and the spread of pandemics? You might retort that it's a global financial and tourist hub, but that doesn't explain why Texas and California, for example, are seeing far fewer cases of COVID-19 yet they are on the border with diverse populations as well, as if there isn't gobs of international traffic in and out of Dallas, Fort Worth, or LAX. Drug addicts also contributed to the spread of AIDS, AIDS slash HIV. Yes, there were a lot of misconceptions in the early days of HIV. Having a teacher with HIV doesn't mean the children will contract it, and you can't get it from shaking hands with those are HIV, who are HIV positive. You can't get it from toilet seats, etc. Remember that! When you read hysteria about COVID-19, more taxpayer funding will not stop AIDS, AIDS, HIV. However, stopping idiots from having multiple sex partners, heterosexual, bisexual, or homosexual, and using condoms will. You can have multiple sex partners if you want, but don't expect me to spend the money that goes into my niece's college fund for your treatment. Stop being stupid. But I digress. Mr. Fauci's HIV crusade like a lot of crusades that involve vacuous celebrities like Bono was a lot of fluff and no stuff. P.S. You can be minding your own business, hurting nobody, and contract COVID-19 or influenza. In most cases, you have to get HIV AIDS because you're a drug addict or a promiscuous homosexual. I wonder if Bill Maher is, is thinking this is the recession he wanted. So let's go back and uh, look at something I did a while back. So do you remember when uh, receding hairline was voting, not voting, urging, hoping, praying, can I use that word when talking about Bill, for a recession? He wants the bottom to fall out of the economy so people can lose their jobs because he wants to get rid of Trump. Do you remember that? To me. Can I ask about the economy? Because this economy is going pretty well. We have to, what? Why, why is that funny? Hey, it is going well for now. For now, right. That's my, thank you. That's my question. <laughs> is, like, I feel like the bottom has to fall out at some point. And by the way, I'm hoping for it. Because I think one way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy. Yeah. So please, bring on the recession. Yeah. Sorry if that hurts people. But it's either root for a recession or you lose your democracy. Trump, I'm Trump is doing it. So that said, uh, since Bill's a comedian and he was saying, bring on, bring on the recession and... And don't worry, folks, we're going to spend our way out of this recession. Just like, uh, the, you remember the summer of recovery under Oboingo in 2010? And we spent, uh, he voted for bank bailouts and automaker bailouts and all this other pork and then signed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which was adjusted for inflation, was bro coming close to the $2 trillion mark. So we're going to spend our way out of this recession. Just like we did last time and it didn't work. And all the all that happened was the taxpayers got shafted. So we're gonna don't worry, po folks. We're gonna spend our way. I also have to ask, real quick, Governor Cuomo, do you need Trump to go wipe your tushy for you off there? I mean, do you guys have a Department of Health for just get rid of it then and let 
Washington take it over. <laughs> Why even have one? But, uh, yeah, we're going to spend our way out of this. So even if this is a quote-unquote recession, uh, Bill says, bring it on. Bill Maher says, bring it on. And that's, and that's great. So uh, are you going to feel bad if you get COVID? Bill, you're in the age range where you shouldn't get COVID, and you don't look so healthy. But uh, now if you uh, progressives have an autistic fit over this, remember – at the Justin Bieber roast, and it's on the Comedy Central channel. Pete Davidson, that little uh, garden gnome, and uh, Jeff Ross, that fat tub that looks like a fire plug, a bald fire plug. We're making jokes about 9-11, so I'm going to do a little joke here for Bill since he's a comedian. And you can't have an autistic fit about it because uh, uh, this other, these other jokes about 9-11, that was real funny, and that's up on YouTube, so it's okay. So, is New York City and Stan Cedar, if you're listening, here's a joke you can tell the next time you uh, do a stand-up at a hole-in-the-wall bar, you know, when you go back to being a comedian because your current gig fails. Is New York City ground zero for COVID-19? <laughs> oh, my. That is so funny, isn't it? Uh-oh, you can't. Uh-oh, free speech. Now, if you have an autistic fit about that, you got to tell Comedy Central to knock it off. Uh-oh. I guess... Uh, butthurt. It's selective butthurt on, by progressives, isn't it? Since Bill said, bring on the recession, well, here you go, maybe. But anyway, like I said, we're going to spend our way out of that. Here I'm on pound the table. We're going we're gonna to spend a bunch of money we don't have, and that'll fix it. Let's go over some uh, numbers real quick here for uh, infection rates. As you can see, New York has been ravaged are you laughing, Bill? 435.57 COVID-19 infections per 100,000. 435.57. Texas, 13.78. California, 20.64. Florida, 34.89. Illinois, 55.08. And Iowa, where I'm at, 17.4. So it's not looking good, but Texas, California... And Florida are all have diverse populations, and all both of them, all of them have major airports where you know, like Dallas, Fort Worth, LAX, or to name two, where lots of traffic and international traffic comes in and out. But yet, they're not nearly as bad as as New York. So, Stan Cedar, what is it with New York City? The AIDS epidemic was spread there. COVID-19 is going crazy there. I'm not saying it's rosy for other states, so, you know, don't say, oh, you're damn playing the other state. <laughs> no, dummy. Uh, it's kind of, but you compare Iowa to New York, any of them, even the, Cal, you know, California and Florida, Illinois, you know, that's where the non-doctor McStupid X is from, 55.08. What's going on? So how come Texas is... Texas has been able to control theirs a lot better than New York. Was it maybe uh, de Blasio and Cuomo's, or de Blasio's stupidity telling people to go out? Maybe people in New York City aren't too bright and they don't know how to wash their hands. You know, since it is ground zero, as I said. And you have to laugh about that because I'm a comedian. So I just, I think it's something wrong with New York City. Maybe you people, Stan Cedar, maybe uh, on your little internet show that you're, I don't know, I don't even know if he's doing it anymore. Maybe you should teach these people how to wash their hands. And uh, I'm assuming since the people in New York City aren't exactly too bright, maybe the CDC needs to give them guidelines on when you go poopy, uh, you know, what order, you know, you pull your pants down, you go poopy, then you wipe, then you wash your hands, not in any other order. Maybe you guys need to get that too. But, uh, yeah, I'm a comedian, so that's funny. So I wonder if Bill Maher... Uh, thinks it's funny too. Has someone asked the bald-headed troglodyte? And uh, that's it for this one. Have a nice day and wash your hands.